Look at Ronald growing the game of baseball right before our very own eyes. Not only is that kid never going to forget that moment, but that clip blew up. So he is just showing how passionate people can be about the game of baseball and hopefully it motivates other kids to go and support their local minor league teams or major league teams in the hopes that they're going to get a fist bump or an interaction with their favorite player. You just love to see it. Aside from that, what's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. Albert Pujols turned on the Jets yesterday, scoring from first. This was a lot of fun to watch. We had some drama in San Diego. Tommy Pham and Luke Voigt might be the next celebrity influencers to have a boxing match. And then the Angels were trying to get some revenge against the Houston Astros in Houston. This recap took forever, so I would really appreciate if you guys not only leave a like, but hit that subscribe button. Because again, this took forever. I would appreciate it. And if you're going to any concerts or baseball games anytime soon, a reminder, save yourself 20 bucks off using code FUZZY on Seeky. Now, real quick before we get into the recaps from yesterday, Gabriel Arias, my current favorite prospect in baseball, has been called up. He will be playing in the doubleheader versus the White Sox today in AAA last year at 21 years old. He had 29 doubles and 13 home runs in just 115 games. He's a 21-year-old phenom. I'm so excited for his future, and we follow each other and talk to each other on Instagram, so I'm really excited. Go follow him, and I cannot wait to see what he does. Kyle Freeland inked a new deal with the Rockies. Look at them securing the future between Chris Bryant, Ryan McMahon. You have Kyle Freeland, and honestly, he's deserving of this $64 million over the next five years. He has really played well, and I mean, he had that one bad season, but we're not going to talk about that. And last but not least, before we get into the games, Ronald Acuna Jr. doubled. Not only did he have that little fist bump moment to go viral, but yes, he doubled, and he looks like he is almost ready to be back with the Braves. And... That almost brings a tear to my eye because I miss Ronald. So we had 16 games from yesterday, and without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about them. I'm going to go a little bit quicker in today's recap. The Braves and the Dodgers. Travis Darno jumps on the very first pitch he sees in the second, and Atlanta knows they're going to need more. So Orlando Arcia, he understood the assignment. He scores Rosario on an RBI double. That was in the fourth inning, and staying with the fourth, Austin Riley helped out. He makes a diving stop, and then fires the first base to throw out maybe the fastest runner in baseball, Trey Turner. And then he plates another run in the fifth, talking about Austin Riley. Max Reed was showing off his Cy Young caliber stuff, making the Dodgers look silly on a few pitches. His night is over after seven shutout innings with seven strikeouts. He walked no one and held LA to just two base hits. Jansen came in in the ninth inning versus his former team, facing off against Freddie with two outs. He's also facing his former team. And here we go. Jansen wins round number one. The Dodgers win streak is snapped at six games. The Rockies and the Phillies, Randall Gritchick is hitting 308 with Colorado. He drives a ball up the middle for an RBI single with two outs, and then Diaz does the exact same thing as the Rockies grab a 3-2 lead. That lead evaporates as Schwarber goes the other way. He puts them out front. That power should just be illegal in Coors Field. And same with CJ Krohn. So it's going to be a problem because he plays 82 games there a year. He's up to six home runs and 14 RBIs, and over his last 100 and something games, 33 doubles, 34 home runs, a whopping 138 OPS plus that was over his last 153. He has been a monster. Daniel Bard has been seeing a ton of action lately because the Rockies are winning a lot of games. He is now leading the NL with five saves. He has not walked a single hitter and the Rockies are eight and three. They have been shutting up the haters as of late because they're signing guys and they're winning ball games. We'll see if it pans out for the rest of the season. Our first doubleheader of the season, I believe the Mets and the Giants. Starlin Marte shows his value. He gets on, he steals second base and and then scores on a wild pitch. Jock Peterson, I don't know why in my script I wrote Joe, it's definitely Jock. He gets that run back for Alex Cobb, which is the first earned run allowed for Tyler McGill this entire year. The Giants get to Tyler a few more times as Vossler gets it done in the third, and then the ageless wonder Brandon Crawford gets it done later in that same inning. Now cue the comeback, Jeff McNeil turns on a pitch to grab his first two-bagger of the year. He makes it a one-run ball game and allows Francisco Lindor to play some hero ball again. He clutches up to tight at four Four runs a piece and then shows off the clutch gene another time for a walk-off single in game number one of the doubleheader. Three home runs and tied for second place in war. Francisco Lindor is back. And then the final game of the doubleheader, Mets and the Giants faced off one more time. Logan Webb's streak is on the line. He hasn't lost the game in 22 starts or something crazy like that. But New York was up for the challenge, scoring two on an Eduardo Escobar double and then another on Dom Smith's RBI single to cap off a three-run third for Mad Max, who was flexing his first battle 
ballot Hall of Fame stuff, almost goes six innings without allowing a single hit. He ends his night with 10 strikeouts and seven innings of work, and Trevor May locks it down in the ninth. These are not the 21 Mets. I just want to say they're fired up and playing with a chip on their shoulder. They also spent a lot of money as their second in payroll, so... Yeah, we're crossing our fingers that they're good. The Yankees and the Tigers, one of the sloppiest games of the year thus far. Weather didn't help. It was 40-something degrees. The Yankees were aided by the baseball gods. As this Barnhart and Alexander miscue hands two runs to New York on a silver platter or a wrapped gift basket. Cole strikes out three in the first, but then absolutely implodes in the second inning. He walks four, only gets five outs, which is the shortest start of his career. The spider tack jokes were running rampant yesterday on social media. Luckily, the Yankees had Clark Schmidt, who showed off that first-round stuff. He was drafted in the first round, I think in 2017 or 18. He shoved three and a third innings of shutout relief ball with six strikeouts, and he will be an integral part of that rotation here pretty soon, in my opinion. And my favorite part of the game was actually after the game when the Angels broadcasters were <laughs> bamboozled. So there was a fake report that Garrett Cole was going to donate 600 MacBooks to a underprivileged school if he went two innings. Obviously, he didn't go two innings. And they fell for it. And he had promised to an underprivileged school in uh, New York before that ball game that he would donate 600 MacBooks if he went two innings or more tonight in that ball game. A sneaky trade that is proving to be huge so far in the beginning of the season. Toronto picked up Zach Collins in exchange for Reese McGuire, and Collins has been raking. He belts a 432-foot nuke in the second inning. And then we had something I'd never seen before. Yusei Kikuchi licks his finger while on the bump. So JD is awarded a free ball by Angel Hernandez. So it was a three-ball count. That's a walk right there. Kikuchi gets out of that little jam, and we head to the third, still with a 1-0 ball game. Trevor Story rips an RBI extra base hit, bringing home Hernandez. Evaldi he only goes four and two thirds, but he strikes out six. And I just want to mention, even though Yusei had that little moment, he was fantastic. Just the poor defense and lack of offense did the Jays in. Boza Aaron the seventh allows Wong the opportunity to simply lift the ball, and that sacrifice fly was all the Boston bullpen needed. One hit allowed over the final five innings. Garrett Whitlock, the Warlock, is nasty. The Rays and the Cubs, we had a great game down in Wrigley. Tampa Bay went up one to nothing early, and that changes with one swing off the bat from 21-year-old superstar. Yes, he has earned that already. He pimps a 420-foot home run. He has played just 81 games and is already worth nearly four and a half war, which is historic at this age, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. The most underrated player in baseball comes in. Brandon Lau extends the lead to four to nothing on an RBI single. Patrick Wisdom is heating up a two-run blast in the fourth, gives him 30 home runs in his first 117 career games. Tampa Bay was held at bay for the next few frames, but they bounce back in the seventh. Randy doubles in Taylor Walls. Harold Ramirez comes through with a massive RBI because Nico Goodrum came in clutch for his team. He put the Cubs on his back. He had an RBI three-bagger, makes it 6-4, to four, and then scores on a wild pitch to bring it within one. But then Chicago ran into a buzzsaw. Andrew Kittredge was playing on rookie mode, striking out two in two perfect innings on relief. And these two teams have been really fun to watch. The Angels and the Astros, Brandon Marsh and Bregman trade RBIs early on. And Adele is trying to get some payback versus Framber after looking stupid on opening day. He uses his speed to put the Halos up by one on an infield single. Now, Houston may be left in Framber a little bit too long because Duffy and May field both extend the lead in the fifth with a few RBI singles and it didn't stop there. Suzuki barrels one to bring home two more and then Brandon Marsh continues to swing a hot bat. Ten RBIs and a nearly 370 on base percentage to start the season. Unfortunately he lost rookie eligibility so that means more votes for Jeremy Pena. The kid is already worth .8 war. He's sporting a 333 batting average and six extra base hits. I wanted to shout him out as the Halos win big in Minute Maid. The Mariners and the Rangers, two other AL West teams. A. Eugenio Suarez leads baseball and home runs since 2018 with 132. That is five more than Nelson Cruz. Kelnick is heating up right in front of our eyes, ripping another 110 plus mile per hour home run, his second of the week. Robbie Ray is able to skate around some trouble. He allows two and runs. All of the damage came off of the bat from Marcus Simeon and Abraham Toro homers for a 390 foot two run shot to bring home J-Rod. It was kind of an embarrassing loss for Texas because that means they are now two and eight on the season. And I guess the one thing to remember is that there is still time plenty of time left. Atlanta, the Braves, the team that just won the World Series, they weren't even a 500 club until August. So they played three or four months of eh, baseball, and then they win the World Series. So again, plenty of time. All right, let's talk about this Padres and Reds game. Tommy Pham was booed again, and then he channels that anger again for his second home run in back-to-back -back games. 
Just Manny Machado actually had people on base when he hit a home run, so that's Manny's third, and he's easily number one in war, sitting at 1.4 already. He's on pace for a 20-war season or something insane. But now we have to talk about some drama as Luke Voigt slid into Tyler Stevenson. Okay, maybe the head push was a little bit weird, but Luke Voigt had nowhere to go, and you're allowed to run into the catcher if he has the ball. So in my opinion, not a dirty play, but Tommy Pham, he wanted to throw hands. He said that you can meet me at any local gym. I know Muay Thai, and we can fight this out because you're dirty as as F, as he called it. Either way, Hosmer and Myers push the lead to four to one, and Azokar doubles home Myers to let Musgrove dial it up for seven punchies in just under seven innings, and San Diego is now on a three-game winning streak. Tatis, he's gonna be back in the next month or so, and this team has the makings to be special. The Cardinals and the Marlins. Albert Pools is gonna be starting every single game. A lefty is on the bump. He doubles and then scores on a Paul DeYoung two-out, two-bagger. Bad defense from the Marlins allows DeYoung to score, and then the 2021 MVP candidate Tyler O'Neill singles in the third to score Goldie, but he was thrown out trying to go to second. Pujols gets on again and shows off the blazing speed. Edmund shoots the gap and Pujols broke the sound barrier while rounding third base. All of this scoring was for Adam Wainwright. He delivers five and two thirds, very strong innings, only one earned run with six strikeouts. Waino is 14 wins away from 200 and just about five war away from a career war of 50. So he might be a future Hall of Famer. And speaking of war, Pujols is finally back at 100. I'm sorry for a voice crack but it just makes me emotional because my heart is my heart's full I can now retire from these recaps because Pujols is now back at a 100 career war obviously I'm just kidding I need money so I'm gonna keep making these videos but you love to see it you guys mind if we get a little bit rowdy we let Telez do his thing and then Colton Wong has been a godsend over the last few days for the Milwaukee Brewers they give Corbin Burns a nice little four nothing cushion and Burns goes five shutout, although he does get torched for two home runs. This was his seventh game since 2020 with 10 strikeouts and zero walks allowed. He is easily pacing everyone in that category. Renfro has easy pop. He connects on his first home run of the year and Josh Hader is just sick. Five saves already, has only given up one hit in five innings. The Royals and the Twins, KC saw themselves in an early hole, but they might be leading the league in X grit. That's a made-up stat, by the way. But they do fight back fairly often. Salvi smokes one in the fourth, which was almost immediately negated by an RBI single from Carlos Correa. Nicky Lopez has a huge AB in the fifth, taking a walk with the bases loaded. And Salvi's power surge continues with his second multi-home run game of the season. He's averaging a home run every 27.7 ABs. That is Barry Bonds level, everyone. Hunter Dozier rewards the KC fans that showed up and stayed, belting a game-winning 430-foot moonshot, and Stamont nails it down. The A's and the O's, the battle of the vowels. Baltimore takes the early lead, and it would have been more if the A's didn't have Spider-Man in center field. Pache is an absolute joy to watch. This series has been a surprise, solid mix of great starting pitching, and I don't know if that's because the offenses suck or we are just underrating the two staffs. Cole Urban wasn't perfect, but he does throw four scoreless after that first inning hiccup and Seth Brown is hitting just 194 but every time he puts the ball in play it seems like it counts with 11 RBIs already that two run double puts Oakland up by one and then the bullpen is able to hold it down for Zach Jackson who notches his first career save the boycott is real by the way only 3,000 fans showed up for the A's whereas 5,000 were at the AAA team of the A's in Las Vegas and there was 35 mile per hour wins so it looks like the A's yeah the boycott is in full effect and they might be moving to Vegas pretty soon and the last but not least the final double header the Nationals and the Diamondbacks, Josiah Gray has been disgusting to start 2022. Bumgarner was equally as good, but his defense let him down in the fifth as Washington takes the lead on two unearned runs. Gray goes back out for the sixth and gets the first out, so he's now eligible for a W, and he gets it. He has a 3.14 ERA and an almost 12 strikeouts per nine in his first few starts. He has the makings to be a top-shelf starting pitcher. And in game number two... Yeah, Victor Robles, one of the best in the game defensively out there in center field. That was pretty much the only bit of action through five as Gilbert and Anon, or Anon? I don't know how to say his last name. They go back and forth with scoreless frames. Ultimately, this one comes down to a single run driven in by Cesar Hernandez and Tanner Rainey escapes a no-out, bases-loaded jam to grab his third save of the season. So that does it. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, by far the longest recap I've ever done because the script just went on and on and on. So I would appreciate a like and a sub. And if you're going to any concerts, any baseball games, use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save yourself some money and enjoy the web gems. See that pitch. Swing, little pop behind first. Long run bets. Good jump. Still going. And sliding. It makes a great catch on the warning track. First pitch way right. J.P. Crawford is robbed by J.P. At the right spot. Exit below 107, so that was hit right on the button. 
Chop to third. Donaldson's going to come home. Play at the plate. He is out. Higashioka applies the test. Starts in Marlins history. This one for the right field corner. Long run. Garcia is able to get there, and he makes the catch and slams into the wall. Well, a 